Welcome. This is Money Heart, where we explore the emotional side of money. I'm Camille Diaz, and today we're discussing six-figure skills versus a six-figure mindset. My guest today is Rena Cook. She is a voice, speech, and presentation coach. She is an author, she's a TEDx speaker, and she's a wonderful friend of mine, and I love spending time with her. So, Rena, welcome to the show. So glad oh, to have you. Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here, Camille. I'm so honored that you thought of me. Oh, thank you. So today, I, we, we talked a little bit before this, and uh, you were sharing with me some of your story and what you've done in the past and, and what you did for 40 years, and I would just love to kind of share that with everybody. So if you want to take it away and tell oh, us sure. all about that, it'd be awesome. Well, I was um, a teacher for 40 years. Um, I started life as a high school drama teacher and adored that. I felt like I was saving the world one drama student at a time. And, and then I had a little bit of a hunger for more. I wanted to be challenged in a different way. So I went back to school, got another degree, and started teaching in higher education. And of course, I was always teaching actors. Um, theater is my love. Uh, teaching is my purpose. Nice. And, uh, and so up until five years ago, I spent my entire adult life teaching. Well, when you teach, as you know, you don't expect ever to make a lot of money. Right. You just accept that. I love to do this job, so I'm going to accept the fact that my income is going to be capped. Mm -hmm. And my income finally capped between sixty-five and seventy thousand dollars a year. Yep. Uh, I was a full professor, and I had a couple of additional little perks, you know, that you get when you are a long-term employee, <laughs> right? And so I felt at that time really lucky that I was in education and making that level of income. Yeah. But had and in I education, not, that is a really and lucky education. level of income. Right? But if I hadn't had the good fortune and the good sense to marry well, that income would not have afforded me the kind of life to which I aspire. That's right. <laughs> right. Thus, we have the tiara today. That's right. You probably ought to take in the tiara. Um, Camille and I are channeling our inner princess today. Absolutely. As we talk right. about money. Yes. <laughs> that royalty. We deserve, that we work for. We are royalty, right? Yes. Um, I also brought my wand. It's hard to have a tiara without a wand. So back to my money story. So I was used to working my patootie off and making a, reason, a relatively small amount of money. Sure. So when I decided to be uh, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, when I retired from teaching, I opened my business, mm. Vocal Authority. And uh, I had no idea how to run a business. I still don't think I have much of an idea how to run a business. I know how to generate content, which is what teachers do. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. Six absolutely. hours a day for 40 years, I generated content. Right. That's what I still know how to do really well. Running a business, not so much. So my financial issues have really kind of continued as I have been developing my small business because it's hard to change your mindset. Right. Right? It is. When you, and you understand this. When you start to set fees for coaching, for speaking, yeah. how much is that worth? Right. In education terms, not much. You're doing it all day, every day, and it's just part of your regular salary. And you don't, you don't have to ask for money. Right. At least additional salary. You yeah. know, we ask for money for students and for activities and sure. things. But as far as every day, this is how much money I get for doing this thing. Mm -hmm. So it's been hard for me to say, I don't do that. <laughs> you know, well, it's complicated language there. It is hard to say. 
it is hard to say. The first time I said to um, a national level attorney training thing, I make $5,000 for this kind of event. Yes. Because I'm an actress, I said it just that easily. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Were you but, on the phone so it was easier yeah, and no yeah, one could yeah. see your face like, going through? Ah! <laughs> and so it's like I have to practice right. saying that and wrapping my mind around the fact that I should be commanding more money. Yeah. And as I said to you in our preliminary conversation, I think I have a six figure skill set. Right. And yet I have an under six figure money mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like I, I don't deserve more. I haven't longed for more in my previous life. Sure. Um, you know, uh, but now I, I do want more. I want to be fairly compensated for my skill set. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, that's kind of a weird thing when you become an entrepreneur. Um, because especially if you are offering a service, you know, if you're selling a product, then you have to figure out how much that product is worth. But if you're offering a service, it's you. So mm -hmm. you go, well, how much do people pay for access to me? Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, especially as a speaker or a trainer or a coach or something like that, because the, the pricing on that is very wide. And how do we know what to compare to? You know, if, if you're selling a product, say um, you're making your own face cream, well, then you can go and look at face creams and you can say, well, there's $4 face creams and $20 face creams and $75 face creams and $200 face creams. Mm -hmm. And then decide somewhere in there where you think yours fits or who's your market. Um, but as a service, yeah, same. It's, it's hard. Am I, am I a $5,000 speaker? Am I a five, I don't know. $500 speaker? Mm -hmm. Am I a $100,000 speaker? Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. And, and, and then there's another thing in that dynamic is although I want to earn wonderful money for what yes. I do, my compulsion to give what I have is really right. not based on money. Right. For example, when a woman comes to me and wants coaching, she needs coaching. She needs what I have. Mm -hmm. If she's coming out of abuse, out of prison, out of poverty, I want to give. And, yeah. and so I often give it away or at a reduced rate. Yeah. And that makes it even harder when I then go into a different scenario where I should be saying $1,000. Five thousand dollars. Sure. You know, so there's a wide range of what the client can logically bear, and mm -hmm. how badly do I want to give my service? Yeah. You know, my business coaches say, "Don't give it away. What are you doing, spending all this time on your pro bono clients?" Yeah. And I understand that, but if I don't have the big paying client in this time slot. Mm -hmm. And somebody who can't pay me needs me mm -hmm. in this empty time slot. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you that know? is your, that's your teacher training. You know, you spent all that time as a teacher and that's what teachers do. That's what, mm -hmm. that's what teachers love to do is to give mm -hmm. away information and knowledge so that you can build the next group that's coming up. Right, exactly. And and so there there it feels like kind of a war. Mm -hmm. You know, a war inside your heart and yes. inside your brain. Yes. And I want to be both those women. Right. Yeah. Right. The one and that gives away and helps everybody. And the one that makes a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's constantly evaluating um, each situation mm -hmm. and then 
as as I get more and more business and as people seem to be willing to pay more and more for my services, then adjusting my mindset and practicing accordingly so that it doesn't stick in my throat in an unnatural way. Uh, but if you can, but if you can't, that's okay. <laughs> I don't want to be backing out the back door for less money. Uh, right. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, especially when you have such great training and such great skills. Um, I I don't know if people have watched you at all, but you know we're on LinkedIn and Facebook and things like that together. So I see your small training videos of telling people how to stand and how to speak and how to make sure your voice is heard. And when I give a talk, I follow what you've taught. You know, I stand up there and I make sure that I'm all positioned and, I, and that my knees are in the right position, that I'm opening my mouth all the way in the back and that, you know, and I'm breathing deeply, yes. <laughs> that I'm breathing deeply and I'm not squeaky yelling at people and uh, forcing it across and that I'm making space and yeah. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for that. Um, as I was, as I was coming through as a teacher, um, I was always driven by what do I need to know next? Mm. You know, what's the next thing I need to learn? And so I would, you know, work four or five years and then get restless. And it's like, what do, what, what do I not know yet? Mm. And so I look around for the next education opportunity. Oh, I need to go do that. I need to go study that. That was how I got to spend that year in England. You know, I when I developed my love for the Kiara. <laughs> so, so what did you spend your year in England for? Um, studying voice, voice oh. training. Oh, they, cool. um, the, the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, and it is just as posh as it sounds, yeah. uh, they have a course for voice trainers. Wow. For people who train actors and corporate folks to use the voice well use the voice and the body. And uh, I wanted to know everything about that because as I was training actors, it became apparent to me that if the voice is not working, nothing else works. Right. And so I said, well, okay, I need to know everything about voice training. Mm -hmm. And so I quit my job. I was teaching at OSU, Oklahoma State at the time. And I was in my tenure year year. In other words, the following year, I was going yeah, to go up tenure. to tenure. Yeah. And of course, tenure in education is job for life. Right. I mean, that's the shorthand for it. Yeah. And yeah. it's a huge thing. It is. But I was curious about something else. Oh, wow. And so I, I left my job at OSU and went to London for a year wow. by myself and uh, went to this school and did this master's program and sucked the marrow out of that experience. I went to theater every week. I went to museums. Uh, I shadowed as many voice trainers as I could. You know, it's like, can I just look in and see how you do what you do? Uh, and came back from that experience a teacher reborn. Wow. I mean, you don't go through the crucible of a graduate de degree, you know, in your mid years. It wasn't like I was a kid going to grad school. Um, <laughs> I was a grown up later, isn't it? It's a little different. A little different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. And it, so, so that it is an example of how I am driven by what I need to know. Yeah. My first book that I wrote, I didn't know anything. It wasn't like, oh, I have so much to share. I need to write a book. It was that I needed to learn. And there was a woman in London who I needed to learn from. Mm. And so I went to London, especially, this was after I had returned from the course, and I pitched to her that we write a book together. Oh, wow. And initially, she was like, oh, I don't really have time to do that. I don't have time to talk about it even. But I do take the train every day from her home in Brighton to where she was teaching at the time. The Royal Academy of Dramatic Art is where she taught. And so she commuted two hours every day on the oh train. Okay. One day, right? Yep. And so I rode the train to Brighton stayed overnight in a B&B &B so that I could ride the train with her 
the next day <laughs> back to London. And by the time we got to London, we had a deal to write together. And she said, well, you know, Rena, I've always wanted to write a little book about breath. And I said, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Could she have said anything and you would have said me too? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so for the next seven years, she and I worked on this book together. And, you know, not full time, of course, you know, how you go in and out. I working in the U.S., she was in London, and it, she, she had the smarts. I had the organization and the tenacity mm. to yeah. keep after it, right? right? And, and the two of us together, we created a project. We created yeah. a book. And through that, I learned a lot about the subject of the performance breath. Mm -hmm. And I learned about publishing. How do you do a proposal? How do you submit? How do you, the how-to of that, I learned. Right. Yeah. So that then the next three books that I wrote is like, hey, I know how to do this. I can do this. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> However, this last one, I thought, this is my last book. You've written. Yes, you yeah. know how hard it is oh, to make yourself sit down and do it. I had to do it every day, first thing in the morning, literally waking up at 5 a.m. before anybody else was awake in my house sit there, write for an hour and a half, two hours, and then, okay, go do the rest of the day and do mm -hmm. it the next day again and again and again in order to get through it. Because if unless you're an author and that's all you do, life sort of gets in the way. Yeah, life has to go on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I took a sabbatical to write one book, and that was great you know, because I had nothing else. I just did that. But the other projects, you're right. You have jobs. You're doing things. Yep. And you have to really want to write that book. Really want to write it. Yeah. My kids were a bit younger at the time. And so, um, you know, once the day started, it, it was kid things and work things. And, and then there's homework and then there's dinner. And then by the end of the day, I can't write a thing because I'm exhausted. And my brain right. doesn't talk anymore. So nobody and, wants and to your, And that. your book, by the way, is wonderful. Oh, thank it you. It is just packed with helpful information to keep people focused. You yeah. know, you are such a focused and grounded individual and your oh. grasp on the process that we keep ourselves grounded and focused and forward moving. You know, how do you keep the process going forward? And thank you. You know, it's 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 a wonderful book. Thank you. That that is kind of my thing is let's get things done. Okay, move a little, move a little, move a little. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a willful person. <laughs> if I want something done, it will get done <laughs> somehow. Well, I, I'm. I'm that way too. It's and I overcommit because of that. Yes. Because if I can conceive of the idea, I must do it. Yes. Yes. Right? I don't go, oh well, this would be good, but you know, I can't really do that right now. No. It's like, okay. I yeah. can do that. I can do, I can that. do that. Yeah. Let's make it happen. I'm on it. <laughs> and then I'm like <laughs> <laughs> and my husband says, you've done it again. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Husbands are good about that. They notice when we've overtaxed ourselves and overbooked ourselves. And they say, well, when was the last time you ate food? And <laughs> I don't know, yesterday, the day before, I haven't kept track. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's not going to be now. <laughs> You're right. It's not going to be now. My husband will never bring me things. When I'm really in a project, he'll just show up with a bottle of water or something. He's like, here. Oh, thank you. I am thirsty. And I drink half of it instantly. <laughs> well, my, my husband is very supportive as well. But his thing is the end of the day, it's like glass of wine. <laughs> Oh, yes, oh, I can be lured away when I was teaching. And of course, I threw myself into teaching in the way I do everything else. And I would just come home exhausted and stressed. And I would head for the bath. He would already have the bath started, the nice. wine poured, and I'm just shedding clothes as I go to the bath. I love it. 
And his line was, well, what was the drama in the drama today? Right. Because I taught in a drama department. I'm teaching drama. It's drama, drama all day. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yes, my daughter's in drama, and sometimes we ask her, "Was there any drama, drama?" And she's like, "It's drama. There's always drama. <laughs> There's always drama. <laughs> always drama." So, so do we need to bring ourselves back to money? I was money? just thinking the same thing. <laughs> so, what if anything um, tips or resources? How have you developed your mindset? What has helped you kind of move from from that? Uh, I guess almost employee mentality mm -hmm. of, you know, I give and I'm compensated and that's the deal and I'm done to the entrepreneur mentality. And, and how did you develop that skill? Because clearly now you're much better at. I'm better at it, there. but I don't feel that I'm a hundred percent successful. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how I've moved forward and then I'll tell yeah. you where I feel like I really need to go still. Okay. Um, coaching. I've gotten some really, really good coaching mm. and from people that I really admire, you know, like Robert Johnson, our mutual um, friend, yes. and mentor. And yes. And when, when he says, you got to stop that. <laughs> and I go, Oh yeah, I guess I do. And then he's so good at helping you find the words that you need to practice. Right. Because yeah. it's not enough just to be told you need to do it. You go, yeah, yeah, you're right. I know I need. How do you replace old habits? Right. You practice new ones. Yes. Yep. And, uh, and so his making me practice new ones has been helpful. Yeah. I read the book, You're a Badass with Money, or I'm a Badass with Money. I forget. Jen Sincero. Yeah, you are a badass at making money. Yes, and you yes. worked through that book in your Wine, Women, and Wealth series. I did. And, yeah. uh, and, and so that was a revelation. And it also has practical work where you work on your mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with affirmations. I've worked with meditation. Um, and it's 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 hard. Well, where I still fall short is I don't mind spending whatever it occurs to me to spend mm -hmm. on whatever shiny object is out there related to my business. I need this sign. I need this tablecloth with my logo on it. Right. I need to purchase an exhibit table at this conference. Mm hmm. All right, which I will, full disclosure, this particular event cost me $2,500. By mm. the time I bought the airline ticket, I paid for the table, I bought my signs, I bought wow. my tablecloth, right? Wow. Not one dollar did I make back. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Yes, that is a hard lesson. <laughs> and, and yet, it, at the time, it just seemed like a no-brainer. Right. You say, I, I have to. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still spending way too much money so mm -hmm. that I, I'm breaking even mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right on my business. Uh, so I, I haven't lost money on my business, but I can't say that I'm making a profit. Yeah. I bring in more money every year in the five years that I've done this. Yes. But I'm still spending a lot mm -hmm. because there's no, there's no CFO saying, Rena, you can't do that. <laughs> and because your high value is learning that expanding your knowledge mm -hmm. is, is your kind of highest value other, other than sharing that with others. Mm -hmm. it's increasing your own. So you're, okay. you're putting your money where your value is and that's what we all do. So that, you know, I get that. I get that. Yeah. 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 So, so that's where I still have to learn mm -hmm. is, um, the business of business. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I am able to bring in business because I love to network. I'm a crazy ass networker. 
Mm -hmm. because it, it feeds my my inner extrovert. Yes. Well, she's not so she's so not, not so inner. Yeah, she's, she's not very inner. There. <laughs> she wears tiaras. Yes. <laughs> I'm a shameless extrovert. So I love to be out talking to people about what I do. Right. Right. And I love hearing what other people do. And I love figuring out how I can help them do it better. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and I don't mind saying, can I come speak to your organization? Mm -hmm. I have this speech, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. do you need a lunch and learn? Right. Um, so I, I, I do, I'm good at that. But as far as a business plan, a business model, how that all actually needs to be created, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's not very fun and exciting, is it? But I think you do it better than I do. Uh, I'm much less of an extrovert. Um, I, I, and I'm a high organizer. That's one of my high values is having things organized and, and set and have a strategy and a plan and, and, and a plan for tomorrow and, and maybe a plan for next week. And, 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 and procedures. You love yeah. process and I procedures. I love processes and procedures. I do. And process and procedures are my kryptonite. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to find a way to uh, maybe hire yourself a process and procedure person, probably not me, because I am a little bit swamped having decided I need to make a show now. <laughs> uh, but it sounds to me like maybe you need a, a side process and procedure person and perhaps someone who has permission to tell you no or withhold the checkbook or the credit card. Well, you know, and that's interesting. My husband keeps my books. Oh, nice. But yes. your husband cannot tell you no. It's hard. Yeah, it creates <laughs> because I'm like, attention. what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and when he sees me get that look. <laughs> <You know>? Uh huh. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's what I need as I move forward. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Someone that it doesn't matter if you hate them at the end of the day because they don't care and you're not attached to them. So, it's right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, I hate that guy. But then you look at your balance at the end of the month and you're like, oh, a thousand dollars left. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have paid off somehow. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, this has been super fun. Tell me really quick about your uh, TEDx talk. And then I want to talk about your book and, and show everybody. Oh, your thank you. Um, well, I did a, a TEDx talk um, several years ago now, and it's called Power Without Press which is kind of the foundational tenant that I teach. Mm -hmm. I don't teach people to be loud and outshout. I teach them how to find power deep in the body, in, 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 in the belly, where we breathe deeply, mm -hmm. where we house our inspiration. When power comes from that energy source, it is authentic and it is compelling and it's never shrill or loud. Yes. It's just strong and present and compelling. What a and great so that, point for women because it's so easy when you try to be, um, not necessarily loud, but when you try to make sure you're being heard, mm -hmm. that your voice ends up sounding shrill and miserable and, and difficult to listen to. Well, often strong women achieve those uh, adjectives yeah. because in order to be strong, to be heard, they've had to learn to project this way. Mm. You know, when my chest comes up and my chin goes out, then right. my voice gets shrill. Yes. Yeah. And I don't have to back off. I don't have to back down. I move the energy to a different place in my body. Mm. right and then yeah. I maintain my power and my authority without going to that place that we as human beings aren't comfortable with shrill yes right yes. shrill is like fingernails on a blackboard right right to many of us mm -hmm. and uh, and if we can take the shrill <laughs> actually this reminds me of a story um my 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 new book her voice in law, I wanted to call it overcoming bitch perception. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> but when the American Bar Association agreed to publish it, 
they didn't want to have the word bitch in a title in their library. Right. I get that. Understandable. I get it. And, and, and for their endorsement, it's like, you can make the title whatever you want. <laughs> yes. Right. But, but certainly there is implied in much of the work I do with women mm -hmm. is that you can be powerful, you can be heard, you can be compelling without being shrill. Right. Yes. Which is such wonderful work and so helpful. Thank you so much. I want to show everyone who's watching and tell the people that are listening about Rena's book, um, Empower Your Voice for Women in Business, Politics, and Life. So I love that. And I have a copy of it, which is excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and then my new book, let me just do a shameless commerce moment. Absolutely. Um, Her Voice in Law. Uh, the thing that I love about the covers of both these books is it shows empowered women communicating. Yeah. I wanted on the cover of both those books for any woman to look at that cover and see herself. Any ethnicity, any age, any body type, any socio-education level. Yeah. I wanted the women who looked at that say, I can see myself right there. This book, this work is for me. Yes. And it is. And it is. Well, awesome. Thank you. And uh, thank you to all of our listeners and viewers. I'm your host, Camille Diaz. This show is sponsored by Serenity Financial, a five rings financial agency specializing in financial education, living benefits, and guaranteed lifetime income. Our money mantra for today, which Rena and I came up with together, and it's mostly... Okay, well, we'll share it together. Yes. We'll share it together. Absolutely. It's, I am worthy of abundant income. I am worthy of abundant income. Yes. I love it. Thank you, Rena. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.